So today we're going to do, it's a short webinar, a workshop webinar. Um, initially, it's usually a two hour one. Um, hi, Sanya, thank you for, for joining. So today, look, it's going to be, it, it's one hour and it's really going to be about personal branding. So, you know, what is a personal brand? How do we build our personal brand and all the rest? So it's really, um, I think it's, to me, having a personal brand, it's like building a house. You have to know what you want your brand to be before you start to put it out into the world. And what I see happen a lot of the time is that people, and myself included, I'm guilty of it as well, um, when you start in business, you kind of don't know what your personal brand is. You kind of just go for it and you just think, you know, like, hopefully this is how I will be positioned in the market and all the rest. But, you know, the more that I've been in business and the more that I've worked with clients and the more that I've, you know, been um, working with clients, you know, whether it's small, medium or large, the one thing that I've come to see is that the brands that are really strong and powerful are generally the ones that have a really good foundation, right? So it's talking about having a strong foundation up front um, in order to, to really build a good brand. So we're going to we'll make a start. I'll just really quickly, and I don't know if you can actually show me yourself, but Andrew, if you can hear me, can you just tell me a little bit about your business? No, Andrew, Kevin? Or Sanya? See, I don't know if it actually lets you speak. Allow, here we go, allowed to talk. Can I do audio? Here we go, allowed to talk. I'll give you the, here we go, I've just put you allowed to talk. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Um, so, Andrew, if you can hear me, can you hear me now? Yep. Yep, perfect. So, tell me a little bit about your business. What do you do? Uh, my business is simple. I'm in the business of bling shots, which is my name for those LED slingshot toys that you shoot up into the air at night and they. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, and they've got these little plastic wings that help them float back down to the ground slowly and everybody loves them. Perfect. Everybody amazing, loves amazing. Loves Thank you. Insurance awesome. Loves, so. Great, great. Thank you, Andrew. Kevin. If you can hear me. I, yeah. I had to unmute myself. Um, <laughs> yes, mine is uh, WHS Apps and it's a uh, software as a service that operates globally as well as across any industry and um, employee level access. And that's pretty much it. So what's a, what solution are you offering? What's your solution to your product? Solution is compliance for workplace health and safety. As yeah. in, um, my background is I was an inspector and we also did prosecutions with the Queensland government. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had 30 plus years out there. So I've collected all this data and information on the incident reporting. So it makes it, mm -hmm. it complies with Australian standards, complies with codes of practice okay. and legislation. So if you're in New South Wales, um, it will populate the information for New South Wales. If you then go to WA, it'll put the information there. If you then jump on a plane and go to Canada, it'll populate the data. Yeah, great. Interesting. Very interesting. Perfect. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And last of all, Sanya. Morning, everyone. Um, so Sanya from SW Group. So our business is construction slash civil, um, civil company. Um, we do a lot of earthworks, steel fabrication, and just, um, you know, general site services, um, that type of stuff across, um, across Perth Metro. So that's pretty much us in a nutshell. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Thank you, Sanya. I think there was someone's coming in and out, but that's okay. Um, BT or something. But anyway, so we'll, so thank you so much for everyone for sharing. Um, and, you know, I guess it's my turn. My name is Sandra Tricoli. I'm the Director of Savvy Creations PR. So we're a PR agency and a content marketing agency. And my, I guess, my elevator pitch or what we do is I position, I help position my clients as the authority of their industry. So when somebody thinks about your industry, I position my clients for you to be top of mind um, so that's really I guess my elevator pitch and you know I'm going to go into elevator pitch a little bit more because that is really really important um, so I'll go to the slides um, personal branding here we go so oops current slide okay great so I'll just share the screen so we're all on the same page so um, I have been working um, 
So my background is journalism and public relations. I started my business. I was just about to do a post on LinkedIn before the webinar and it I, I unfortunately accidentally deleted it and I was like, ah, got to go. Um, but I actually started my business six years ago. I got made redundant, not once, but twice in a year. Actually, it was less than a year. It was about six or nine months. Um, and I was writing a post that, you know, rejection equals redirection. Um, so, you know, it's, for me, I've been in this business for six years now, and I predominantly work with clients, helping them really establish themselves both online and offline. I guess to me, I'm come from the traditional media. So it was, you know, print, radio, TV, but now it's all about social media. So um, not all about, but there's a big part of, you know, our presence and our personal brand being built by us and not having to rely solely on, you know, external factors such as the media. Media still has a huge presence. Media still plays a big part in creating that authority, but it's still not the whole part. So I think, you know, and, and I'm going to go here through the evolution of, of personal branding, but, you know, it very much used to be that you would rely on, you know, the media or people and whatnot to really, you know, say how you're the go-to person, where now we have that power, which is really quite exciting. So for me, I've really married the kind of traditional media to social media and how do we liaise the two? It's not saying that social is the way to go or meet or traditional is the way to go. Combination of two is actually the perfect scenario. So um, today is going to be a little bit about, you know, personal branding. And I'm going to touch on LinkedIn because LinkedIn to me is a really great um platform where you can build your personal brand, in particular if you're in the B2B space. So we'll get started. About me, business owner, Savvy Creations PR. I've had the business now for six years. Um, and yeah, it's it's really exciting. I love it because I love that I get to work with so many different industries, so many backgrounds. I learn so much. I'm constantly challenging myself as well. But it's really about helping people position themselves as the go-to in the industry. That's really what I specialize in. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is personal branding, tips on developing your personal brand, why it's important to have a personal brand, keys to success, and also we're going to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, how, how to create a strong brand online. So I am mindful because usually, like I said, this is a two-hour workshop. They've booked it in for one hour, so I'm not going to be able to go over as much content. But if you do need to book in a private one-on-one -on -one session with me after this, you can through the government subsidy, ASBAS, which is through Business Station. So I know, Sonia, you've had a few sessions with me, but Andrew and Kevin, if you gentlemen need a more one-on-one -on -one assistance through the government, Government, it's $40 plus GST for three hours. That's it, right? So outside of the subsidies, $250 an hour with me. Through the subsidies, $40 for three hours. So it's an amazing initiative. So if you do want to book in, let me know because I'm almost booked out for April. I'm going to only take a limited amount of people, but it lets me work with you one-on-one -on -one as well. So if you do need to book in and need a bit more of that assistance, you can take that up. So what does personal branding mean? So I think before we kind of start on what it is and how to build a strong personal branding, it's important to know what it actually is. So personal branding is the ongoing process of establishing a prescribed image or impression in the mind of others about an individual or an organisation. Uh, sorry, I've got a chat message here. I already used my 44 thingy. <laughs> Andrew, if you've already used your 44 thingy, that's okay. Um, you, if you've got another ABN, you're eligible for another 44 thingy. Um, so it's per ABN. So some people have two or three ABNs, which gives you uh, eligibility to do more than um, the three sessions. Otherwise, you can always come privately, but it is a little bit more. Um, so it's the association, so personal branding, it's the association people have to your name. So when somebody thinks of you, you know, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Every tweet you send, every status update you make, every picture you share, and even every word you say um, is really what's going to start to create that awareness or that brand alignment. Because of social media and our subsequent levels of visibility, personal branding is one of today's leading career strategy topics and an essential tool for thriving today's work environment. So I think, you know, sometimes people think, well, I'm not the brand. And in fact, you know, a lot of people say, I don't want to be the brand. I don't want people to know who I am. And that's that's okay, but the thing is, it's becoming more and more popular now and more important to be a leader. So, you know, there was a study done to identify the best company pages on LinkedIn, and they identified that Hayes Recruitment was one of the top 
um, you know, pages on LinkedIn voted by customers and consumers. And the reason was that they leverage company leaders to share exciting news and things like that. So the company leader is still very much the core of the business. Um, you know, whether you want to step completely away from your business or not, but obviously today is about building your personal brand. One of the mottos that I always stick to in business is people buy people before people buy things. So remember that people buy people before people buy things. So your personal brand is going to be the the door opening for opportunities. So if people like what you talk about, if people can see that you know what you're talking about, if people see that you are that authoritative figure within your industry, you're much more likely to open the door to the right people and attract the right people that will potentially become, you know, your fans, that will become your customers, your clients and all the rest. So keys to success in personal branding. So I believe truthfully that every single person has certain skills given to them, right? You know, if you have a skill with talking, if you have a skill in sales, if you have a skill in, you know, leadership, if you have a skill in IT, whatever it is, I genuinely, genuinely believe that we are given skill sets as part of who we are, as part of our DNA. So I truly believe that one of the most important things to build your personal brand is to identify what are my skills? What, do I, what am I known for? Now, we're talking about personal brand today. We're not talking about business brand. It's personal brand. So it's very much about you. What are your skills? And I think sometimes we don't really think about that enough. I know when I've been, you know, thinking about this and doing these workshops, I think, what are my skills? Like, you know, and are my skills what I think are my skills? Are they actually what other people see as my skills, you know? So identify what are your brand attributes and your key skills. What do you, people? what do people say when they, you know, think about you or what do you think or say to yourself when you think about yourself? One of the common ones I always get for me is you're so energetic, Sandra. I'm like, I hope that's a good thing. But, you know, that's one of the things that I get that I've got an energy, a really strong energy. Um, you know, maybe you're quiet. Maybe that's a part of your brand. So de depending on what your skills are, identify them because I think it's really important to that building, to those building blocks. Articulate what differentiates you from others. Now, Nine times out of 10, our business, our industry, our product, our service, someone else is doing it, right? There's a lot of marketing people. There's a lot of mining companies. There's a lot of everything, you know, what makes you different? And I know it could be like, oh, God, I don't know. Like, you know, I care about my customer. Everyone cares about their customer. You've got to really identify what makes you different. What is your unique selling proposition? Understanding your strengths and added value so what strengths do you bring to people effective networking techniques to promote your personal brand networking is still an important element of building your brand so you know when i talk about you know i talk about how do people find out about anyone today any given business any person any product any service how do we find out about them right and networking and referrals is still to this day one of the strongest lead generators doesn't matter how many people i speak to businesses and i've you know over the years of doing this i've, I've been an advisor for this grant now for about four, four, four and a half years, I think. And, um, you know, one of the things that I always get is referrals. That's how we get most of our business, which is fantastic. Referrals will always work. There will always be room for referrals, but we want to identify other lead generators. And to do that, you've got to build a strong personal brand. Understand the power of positive first impressions. This is really important as well. What does your brand stand for? Do you deliver, you know, it's about consistency. You want to show up to the world, not just on social media in one way and then when you go for a meeting another way or vice versa. You want to make sure that, you know, you, you show up everywhere you go consistently. And also, what are the first impressions? When people first meet you, what kind of feeling do they get? 
Create your brand slogan. What's your brand slogan? Mine is create your future with us at Savvy Creations, my business, right? So what's your slogan? You know, what do you want people to know you for? Have an elevator pitch. Really important. It actually really surprises me how many people don't have an elevator pitch, a really strong, powerful elevator pitch. You know, we say, hey, this is what I do, but is it strong enough? Does it does it identify problems? Maybe not problems. Like maybe it's just, you know, something amazing, but what is your elevator pitch? So identify your elevator pitch, write it down and practice it. Build a powerful and impressive online presence. So knowing where your demographic hangs out is really crucial because this is how you want to get in front of them. So for example, with me, I, you know, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn, there's TikTok, there's you name it, YouTube, there's a zillion platforms out there. For me, right, I find that LinkedIn is really my demographic. That's where I want to hang out. That's where my demographic hangs out. Therefore, that's where I put most of my energy into, okay? And last of all, don't be afraid to innovate yourself. I think a lot of the time, you know, or rebrand, right? We see brands rebranding themselves. So we can rebrand ourselves. We can innovate ourselves. We can grow. We can, you know, change. I think sometimes when we're like, oh, well, this is my brand. I've got to stick to my brand. I can't be too different because everyone knows me. Don't be afraid to innovate yourself. It's growth, right? So, you know, we see brands. I know, I don't know if you've recently seen um, Red Rooster. They've got a new logo and everything. Red Rooster can rebrand themselves. And um, mind you, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's growing on me slowly, um, the new logo. But if you know, if businesses can rebrand themselves and refresh themselves, so can we. So identify maybe, you know, whatever it is. How do you show up? Maybe it's colors you wear, maybe it's the way you present yourself, maybe it's the way you write. You know, personal branding isn't just about a photo on Facebook or LinkedIn, it's also how you write, it's how you present yourself when you're out somewhere, it's how you present yourself when you're talking, how when you're at workshops, webinars, seminars, whatever it is that you do it's all consistently aligned with your personal brand so personal branding why is it important it's important because it helps give a person more credibility right it's never been more competitive to land a new job or earn a paycheck with more people building personal brands you need to put yourself out there to get noticed personal branding can let recruiters or customers find out who you are, what you do. The media as well. So, you know, we talk about inbound and outbound marketing. Inbound marketing means people finding you. Outbound marketing means you going to people and promoting yourself. So, you know, if you've built a strong personal brand within an industry and let's say the media needs a story about, you know, X, Y, or Z, they're going to come to you because you are that go-to person for that industry. And the thing is to build a personal brand, I think it's really important to know that it doesn't actually happen overnight. And I think sometimes we see people, successful people, and we're like, wow, you know, it's been a great success and, and you know, that they've made an overnight success. But the truth is it takes years to actually work on and build on. And it's that consistency that is the most crucial part of building a personal brand. You need to stay consistent with what you do. So with the surge of social media, you must manage your own reputation both online and in real life. So similar to what I said before, you know, back in the day, people used to rely so heavily on the media or what other people would say. Now we have the power more than ever, which is a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing is that, you know, we can go and we can respond to any negative comments. We can you know, position ourselves how we want to position ourselves rather than relying on third parties to position us. So, you know, there's a lot of positives, but the negative, I think, is there's just a lot of noise as well. So it's getting harder and harder to stick out. It's getting harder and harder to get noticed. It's getting harder and harder to, you know, find that unique selling proposition. So you've got to dig more in order to really find that. So I really like this. Building a personal brand is much bigger than building a business. The only exit strategy is legacy. I really like that. I, I saw that quote. And I genuinely really like that. So I'm actually reading a really good book at the moment as well. And I've, I've got a lecture that I'm doing tomorrow at Murdoch University. So I've been working on, you know, that they're hiring me to go and do a personal branding uh, workshop and, and on LinkedIn. And, and I've been really studying it and, and trying to really find out more and more information about what does make something a really powerful brand. And I've just picked up this book last week. I haven't actually, I've read a little bit, a few pages, but yet to finish it, but it's really good. 
right? It's called Building a Story Brand. So if you're looking for a good book to read about personal branding and building a story within your business, this is the book to go to. A few people have referred it to me um, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll read it, I'll read it. And then, yeah, I bought it last week. So yet to finish reading it or even really make a good sound start on it, but it's all about clarifying your messages so customers will listen. So going back to my initial building your personal brand is like building a house. You've got to know what you want before you actually build it, right? You don't go buy a piece of land and just go to a builder, hey, you know what, just do whatever you want, generally speaking. Some people may, but nine times out of ten, you want to have a plan. So what I want you to do is I want you to, you know, I think we're so busy working you know, in our business that a lot of the time we don't actually step back and go, what do I want people to know me as? How do I want, you know, when someone says your name in a room, what 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 do people say about you? So I really want you to have a think about, you know, what is your personal brand? What do you want it to be? You know, I don't know if you're a fan of visualisation or vision boards or anything like that. I am. I love that. I think it's fantastic because if you don't know what your personal brand is, how is anyone else going to? Right. If you don't know what you stand for, how is anybody else going to? So, you know, take an hour, two, three, whatever it is of creativity, of really sitting down and going, who am I? Who's my brand? And thinking 10 years ahead and then reverse engineering, right? In 10 years time, this is where I want my brand to be, or this is what I want to be known for, right? And study some of the most, you know, I guess, famous personal brand or famous people really, and identify what made them, and I'm not saying you're here because you want to be famous, but, you know, what makes somebody become that authority? What makes, you know, Elon Musk become the, you know, go-to person in electrical cars? You know, what makes, you know, Richard Branson, the go-to person in, you know, in aeroplanes and Virgin? What makes, you know, Tony Robbins the go-to person in, and look, everyone's different. Some people might say he's not the go-to person, but, you know, in, in that kind of um, life coaching and that. So think about it. And the one common thing you'll find with all of these people is they become the voice of the industry. They share knowledge, they share advice, they share information, right? So to build your brand, you must first go, this is who I want to be. And then you need to build content around that subject matter, right? So you find anyone that you can probably think of that comes to mind as an authority, right? We're talking about public figures. Generally speaking, it doesn't happen by default. You'll find that there's a common link between them becoming that authority or that brand and the amount of content that they put out that is aligned with that brand. It's very unlikely that they're going to be talking about, you know, something completely different and they're known for something different. So, you know, think about what it is that your skill set is. Think about what your values are. All these things are going to create your brand. So think about these words, articulate, professional, strategic, articulate, you know, engaging, leader, enthusiastic, happy, savvy you know like for me I'm like savvy and energetic and 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 passionate and excited and you know hopefully fun and and so you know think about what words describe you as well because I think that is the core of the building base of knowing what your personal brand actually is so you are the architect of your personal brand as I mentioned we need to know what our house is going to look like before we actually start building the house. So you need to know what your personal brand is before you start working on that personal brand. Historically, strong personal brands have been tied to community. Um, oops, I can't see that. Where am I? Leaders, today the world is changed. In the age of social media, building your own brand has become a top priority. You no longer need to be famous to build your own personal brand. So if we look back to, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, even 90s, it was heavily reliant on, you know, external factors building our brand, whereas now it's about us. I have the control to build my own personal brand. I have the control to position myself as the leader. I have the control to, you know, be known as the leader in X, Y, and Z. So what impact do you want to have with your personal brand? 
I think this is super important in order to, you know, and, and this I think goes back to something like this, which is what is your why? What's your impact? What do you want to do? You know, I think when you get clear on what your skills are, you get clear on what your values are, you get clear on what it is that you want to do to impact, whether it's to make the world a better place. I mean, you know, like let's say Elon Musk, for example, we kind of know what he wants to do. We want to know what his impact is. So what impact do you want to have with your personal brand? Do you want to change the world? Do you want to increase people's confidence? Do you want to, you know, help people with their business? Do you want to, what it, whatever it is, what impact do you want to have? All these things are building blocks for your personal brand because the more clear you are, and I think, you know, until we start to look into this in a bit more detail, you kind of, we live by default. You know, a lot of people live on default. They build a brand on default. They build a business on default. They live their life on default. Everything is just done because it's, you know, we don't really sit and think about it. So, you know, what I'm asking you to do is really sit down and think about what is my brand? What value do I want to bring to the world? What are my skills? What are my values? Because all these things are going to help create what that personal brand for you might mean. And like I said earlier, don't feel afraid to work on that personal brand. It doesn't have to be, this is my personal brand. This is it. It's not going anywhere. It can evolve. We evolve as human beings. So you've got to always leave room for that evolution of yourself. But you know, create a, 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 you know, a vision board or write it on a piece of paper. Really, really important. So this is really um, interesting. I found this the other day when I was, um, when I was, yeah, doing the, the um, workshop for Murdoch that I've got tomorrow. Personal branding, self-positioning and all individual branding by whatever name were first introduced in 1937 in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now, have you guys read that book? Andrew, Kevin, Sanya, have you guys read the book, Think and Grow Rich? Some once, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, really, really good book. Um, and interestingly enough, if you haven't read it, it's a great book. Um, let's have a look. Andrew, you've read it? No, Kevin, really good book, really good book. I There's a lot of people that say that this book has been one of the uh, biggest kind of impacts on their life in terms of books that they've read. Many, many people, many people that are, you know, quite successful. If you speak to them, they'll say one of the books that had a profound, you know, change in my life has been Think and Grow Rich. So um, in 1937, this book was created. It's been re kind of done a few times but the original um by napoleon hill and that was personal branding now if you read the book you'll understand that it's all about that visualization it's about law of attraction and things like that now you might think sandra i'm not into law of attraction it's not my thing that's not the point. The point is that personal brand and the whole how I see myself in terms of how I want to portray myself all started with this book. Um, so I think it's really valid for you to, if you get a chance and if you like books, if not this audio, to, to you know, pick up the book and, and have a read because the, the fundamental, I think, parts of this book is that how you perceive yourself is how you will act to the world and how you act to the world will then build your personal brand, right? So if you see yourself as, you know, oh, I've got a message here. We'll definitely have a look for the book. Thanks, Sandra. Sanya, great book. Honestly, it's amazing book, really good. Um, but it's it's basically, yeah, how you portray yourself is how you will then act and how you act will then build your brand and your persona and it's then how people will respond to you. So it's really interesting. And, you know, if you if you see yourself, you know, like I mentioned, if you see yourself as being, you know, unsuccessful and, you know, lazy and poor me and nothing ever goes right in my life and da 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 all these negative things, believe it or not, you will actually start to put that energy out into the world that, this is who I am. And on the other side, I'm successful. I'm amazing. I'm going to help the world. I'm going to do something amazing with my career, with my life. I'm going to impact people. I'm going to have all these amazing, positive 
things and, you know, good opportunity, things come my way and all that kind of stuff, then you start to act as if. So it's think and grow rich. So you start to act in that way that you already are. So, you know, it's really quite exciting because you really do get to become the architect of your life. And it's, it's yeah, it's really, really cool. Another book that I read many years ago, is called The Secret, which is kind of about that as well. It's about, you know, what you put out into the world and how you see yourself is about building your personal brand. So really great book if you haven't read it already. So building blocks. We're talking about building a house. So your values will determine your brand guidelines. What is your appearance? So if you value appearance, you will appear professionally. You will appear with, you know, your hair, you know, properly done and with, the proper retire, but you might not value this. You might say, eh, I don't really care what I wear. It's not one of my values. I just want to wear my pajamas. I'm happy with that. And then that's how you show up to the world. So as you can see here, what you believe in your core values is what's going to determine your brand guidelines. So conversations you have, right? You might think, I don't really value being polite, or I might, you know, value people that are really just out there and they swear when they talk and that's okay with me. That's how you will present yourself. You know, things that you write, content that you put out into the world, once again, it all aligns with your value system. So, you know, depending on what your values are is how you're going to show up in the world. Any activity that you take part in, once again, this is all going to be determined by your value system. So your values are truly the absolute core of how you will build yourself and your brand. Look at these values that you look at the look to these values you have established to really identify what is your personal brand. You might say, I really value, you know, entrepreneurs. I really value um, charity work. I really value, you know, cultural diversity, whatever it is, right? But you will find that being clear on what your values are, and you'll think, Sandra, why does what does values have anything to do with the personal brand? but it does, right? It does because it's how you're going to show up. It's the core of the content that you put out into the world and it's the core of how you show up in the world. So if you have, you know, yeah, it's it's really, really important to identify that. So what is your super skill? People with strong brands are clear about who they are. They know and maximize their strengths. So this brings me back to the very initial um, slide. What I would love for you to do in the next day or two is sit down and write down what are my super skills? What am I genuinely good at, genuinely passionate about? You know, because I think there's nothing wrong with trying to do stuff that isn't just naturally, it's not a skill set of yours, you know, and I think that's good. It's challenging yourself. It's growing. But I've also come to find that people that really excel in their life, in their career, they genuinely, they genuinely will have a really strong skill set and they will, they will go with that skill set and they will grow that skill set and they will you know, that will build their brand on that skill set. So think about that. In fact, I'm going to ask, we've got here, Andrew, Kevin, Sanya, Charity. Um, Kevin, what's one of your skill sets? Sorry. Do you want to <laughs> Yeah. Um, one of my skill sets, I guess, is... I don't know. I mean, I coordinate everything that is happening with this app of like from the architecture. To so the organized, app. organized, very organized is a skill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just bringing this whole thing together. Like it originally started out in a paper format and uh, is now basically in a complete digital system that. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So, 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 so concept to completion so that in itself is a skill visualizing something which is what I'm kind of talking about and bringing it to life you know that's hard there's a lot of skills you know determination would be a skill in that persistence would be a skill in that you know organization would be a skill in that so if you think about you know we all have ideas I have about 500 ideas every day oh I could do this I could do that you know oh this is a good business idea especially if you've got that entrepreneurial mindset you're kind of constantly thinking but there's a difference between thinking about it and doing it so the fact that you had this idea on paper and now it's come to fruition think about all the skills that you needed to get there Oh, completely. Yeah. You know, coordinating, managing, you know, the side of it, working with developers, working in a completely different areas that I was out of my 
my depth in, but I understand now. And yeah. and yeah, creative yeah. visualization is a huge thing. And I mean, this is like 16 years of um, amazing. Um, Good on you. That is incredible. You should be so proud of yourself. So I think definitely consistency and determination are very strong skill sets of yours by the sounds of it. So then, you know, when you create content and you show up to the world, you show up with creativity, you show, show up with determination, that never give up mindset, right? So these are all your traits of your personal brand yes and sometimes we don't see it right sometimes we don't actually see our own traits because we're like oh it's just natural to me like i just thought this is what you do but in fact they're actually really strong skill sets so you know sometimes it's about getting a peer or someone that you know or, or like a colleague or someone to speak to and say hey i have a little exercise i want to do with you I'm going to write down five words that I believe describe me, but I would love for you to write down five words that you believe describe me. And I think that's a really good little exercise to do because it's going to show you how you think you show up and how other people see you show up. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's something that we got to, you know, kind of really think about it's, you know, going back to, I've got a, sorry, a chat question here, bling shots. What's this? Bling shots. You sent something. Bling shots. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, I think you accidentally sent something. Um, so, yeah, so I think really identify what are your skills, what are your values. It doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter how long you've been in business or if you've just started. We all have those skills and values with having a business or not having a business. So think about your journey Think about the last 10 years. Think about what has got me to here. What are some of the skills that I've needed to use in order to get here? So great little exercise. Write down five words that you believe describe you and then ask, not just one person, ask two or three people that know you quite well, professionally or personally. Hey, I'm doing this exercise. I would love for you to just write down five words or five attributes that come to mind when you think about me. And see if there's an alignment there, because if there's not, that's something you've got to think about and think, hmm, am I showing up differently to the world than how I want to be showing up? And what do I need to do to tweak to show up? So, you know, what you were saying, you've got this concept, right, of this is what I want to create. I've got this great idea. It takes time to build that, right? We don't just close our eyes and go, ta-da, it's here. So that is really your personal brand. You need to close your eyes. You've got to think about this is the concept. This is my personal brand. This is what I want to be known as. And now these are the steps I need to take to get there. And I'm going to show you now the different things you need to do to get there. So, yeah, I'll go through this. What are the strengths and others acknowledge when working on a team? That, that are some questions you can ask yourself. I will send you these slides as well. So then you've got these. But, you know, a few questions you can ask yourself when talking about your personal brand. What are the strengths that others acknowledge in me? When working on a team, what roles do I seek to fulfill? You know, so like I've noticed something with myself that I didn't actually realize until I started to realize was that I actually really like doing things that are like, like being a leader. Like I like kind of leading a team and I like, you know, I'm not shy to put my hand up if someone says, you know, who wants to be the leader of the team or who has, you know, so, so I've identified that, um, that is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, when faced with an overwhelming obstacles, what are my skills that I use to overcome it? What was the most successful project? And what was the most important team role I've ever filled? So ask yourself these questions because this is all going to help you establish and really dig deep, you know, and the skills don't just have to be like, I'm fun, I'm happy, I'm good at communication. When you dig deeper and you ask yourself these questions, you start to really go, huh, this is interesting because these are skills that I may have not known that I actually had. Okay. So based on your responses to the previous questions, document your top five strengths, your super skills. For example, you might use words like creative, relationship creator, or make the complex simple. Then you can start to validate your self-perception. So Going back to those exercises of what are your strengths when working on a team, really get to the core of that. Then you've got the you in the middle there. And then what are the five words, the five main words that came out of that, right? When you identify what the five main words are that came out of that, that is what creates you as a personal brand. And then 10 years from now, visualization exercise. So we don't have to do it now because we've only got 20 minutes left of the webinar. But what I would love for you to do, and 
you will find that it will actually have a profound effect on your life. And I I say this with so much confidence because I've seen it happen. I've done it myself. And honestly, the amount of times that I've done something and I'm like, whoa, like it's actually coming into fruition. So what I want you to do is 10 years from now, where do you want to be? When someone says Andrew Bent, when someone says Kevin Gaudi, or when someone says Sanya Govadaritsa, you know, what do you want people to think? What do you want to be known for? What is your legacy? What comes to mind about you? Right? So today, tomorrow, the next couple of days, think about that. Sit down and give yourself half an hour to just think about that. And then if you really want to take it another step further is you can actually go and create some sort of vision board. You know, this vision board can have colors that are aligned with your personal brand. You can have words that are aligned with your personal brand. You can have, you know, images of things that you like that are aligned with your personal brand and all that kind of stuff. So I think having some sort of visual board where you can physically see it will definitely increase the momentum of that personal brand coming into fruition. So the five elements of a successful personal brand, be genuine. You know, I think a lot of the time we're like, what's my unique selling proposition? What can I do different? Da, da, da. It's like that saying, be yourself because everybody else is taken. You know, don't underestimate the power of authenticity. The power of authenticity is so good and so powerful. And so, you know, it makes you stand out because you are yourself. I think sometimes people, you know, and I do a lot of, like I said, consulting. And the number one thing that I see people struggle with is that paralysis of analysis. They analyze so much. What if I say this? What if I'm not liked? What if someone says this? What if I post something in the world and it's bad or, you know, Don't overanalyze it. Be authentic, be yourself, be kind. And that in itself will build your brand. The way you speak, your tone, your, you know, your, your, your body language, all that in itself is actually genuine. So, so don't be afraid to show up, you know, and I think, you know, when we talk about social media and personal branding, it's really, you know, it can be uncomfortable at the beginning. I, I get it. Trust me. I have those days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to draw a video. I don't want to. And I understand that. But once you start doing it, once you start building that momentum, once you start seeing results, once you start building that personal brand, then you're like, wow, this actually works. So be genuine. Just be yourself. Make relationships a priority. So personal brand, it's not just what I say about myself. It's what others say about me, right? So think about that. What do other people, if you're, there's a room of 10 people, what do people say? You know, so making relationships is really important about building that personal brand. Be consistent. Consistency is key to having one clear voice. So don't Speak in one tone here and a completely different tone here. Don't show up in the world in one way and online in another way. Try and have that alignment with, you know, who you are, both online and offline. And consistency, you know, like I said before, it's, you know, it takes, it doesn't happen overnight for someone to go, hey, you need to speak to Kevin or Andrew. They are the go-to person for, you know, this industry or that industry. So really be consistent is important. Tell a story, building a brand story, great book, as I showed you before. So what is your story? So, you know, like I was going to do just before, um, and I've done posts like this before, but I was going to do a post, which I probably will later, is, you know, um, you know, rejection is redirection, that I got made redundant, six years on, best thing that ever happened to me. It's yeah, and and I and it's just being authentic and just being like, this is my story, and just owning the story because sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be very like, oh, do I want to share that? Yes, I do because that's my story. You know, I came just from Australia when I was five years old from Serbia. The war was breaking out. That's my story. So think about what your story is, and your story doesn't have to be about your product or your service. It's about who you are. What is your story? right? People buy people before people buy things. So really identify what your story is. Um, I think there's a thing about Walt Disney, his story is something like he was sitting down with his family and, you know, they had no toys. And then he was like, I want to create something where people can play. And, you know, so, so these people have a story to what got them to where they are. So what is your story? 
leverage that because that is actually whether you like it or not a part of your personal brand how you portray it to the world is up to you but your story is actually a part of your personal brand and last of all evolve right every brand evolves mcdonald's evolves hungry jacks evolves red rooster evolves tesla evolves Every brand evolves, therefore every human evolves, and we need to evolve. We need to evolve to keep up with times. We need to evolve to keep stay relevant. Um, I think, you know, evolving as a human or as a business is important to stay relevant in the market. If we look at brands like your Nokias and things like that, that didn't evolve. evolve. Where are they now? Don't know, right? So Kodak is another one. You know, some of these brands that didn't evolve, they're now left behind for now at least. They might come out and surprise us, but unfortunately, if you don't evolve your brand, personal or business, unfortunately, sometimes it can fall behind. So elevator pitch. To craft a great elevator pitch, you must follow these steps. Identify your goal. What do I want to achieve with my elevator pitch? Explain what you do. Identify a problem. Propose your solution. Put it together and practice. So my goal is to assist clients becoming the authority of their industry, identify a problem is that, you know, there's a lot of noise in the industry at the moment in all different industries. My job is to really be able to pinpoint how you can be that leader, that go-to person. Okay, what is my solution that I will work with you to help you establish your brand, both online and offline? We put the elevator pitch together and we practice that elevator pitch. So then once you do meet people, whether it's online or a networking event, it's always consistent. I work with clients, helping them establish themselves as the go-to person in their industry. Boom, right? So short and simple. You don't want to keep... You don't want to have a story. It's short and simple and sweet. That just really encapsulates who you are, what you do, how you can help. That is actually your elevator pitch. So where do we where do we build our personal brand? So we've got the idea, we've got the vision board. I know who I want to be. I know what I want to be known for. That's it. I've got a clear vision. I've got the you know I've got the architect that's drawn up my house or that's drawn up my perfect personal brand. How do I now show up in the world? How do I let people know about who I am? So this is where it's your job now to get out there. We know what we want. We're clear on what we want. We're clear on how we want to show up to the world. Now we need to show up to the world. So these are the different places that we need to show up. We need to show up on social media, right? So these are the different platforms or avenues where we or our personal brand is most seen and heard. Social media, radio, podcasts. Maybe you want to start being a guest on a podcast. Maybe you want to start your own podcast, right? So it depends on your resources, I guess. Um, you know, so the best way, for example, to do that would be to go, okay, who's my demographic? What podcasts do I align with? Maybe reach out to that podcast producer or the podcast host and say, look, love your podcast, love what you're about, would love to be considered to be a guest speaker because this is my topic of, you know, expertise. Um, radio station as well, you've got 6PR, you've got Talkback Radio, all the rest. So, you know, you can reach out to them with either a press release or say, hey, look, if you ever need anyone to talk about social media, if you need anyone to talk about mining, if you ever need anyone to talk about technology, would love for you to consider me. Contribute to a publication. So once again, what, where's, who's your, who's your target market, right? Because building, for a personal brand to be successful, you need to obviously identify the attributes, the, the skills, the values, and build that personal brand. But for it to have real strength, you want the personal brand to be built in front of the right people, right? There's no point trying to sell meat to vegetarians or vegans. You want to sell meat to meat eaters. So you want to sell your personal brand to your clients, your customers. So it's really important to go, who are they? Where are they hanging out? How can I help them? So contribute to a publication that is aligned with your demographic, right? Yeah, so build your brand, build your core capabilities, your values, your skills, and then identify which radio stations, which podcasts, which publications are aligned with my brand, with what I want to be seen as. Traditional media, obviously, you've got your traditional media. There's still a huge room for traditional media, and it's, it's very good for building that authority. So, you know, having Channel 9 or Channel 7 or Channel 10 or the West Australian or Financial Review or whatever publication 
you are aligned with, having some PR for yourself in there and some traditional media exposure is really good with building a personal brand. Because if you go, you know, I'll use myself, social media, if I'm featured in every single publication and I'm always talking about social media and traditional media is, you know, featuring me, radio, podcasts, I'm featured everywhere talking about social media, then chances are my personal brand is going to be aligning myself with social media. TV as well. So, you know, once again, it's not obviously as popular as it used to be. Um, but, you know, if you do, you know, not long ago I had a, so I'll give you an example. I will just give you a quick example. About six months ago, um, I had a producer call me. She found me on Google. And this is the thing, when you know your brand, when you position your brand, then, you know, you work on your brand online people will find you as well if they need a comment about something if they need you know you to write a feature about something so anyways I'll tell you what happened in this situation so about six or seven months ago I had a producer from Channel 7 call me in Sydney from the Koshi's Business Builders uh, uh, show so it's a TV show on Channel 7 it's about it's Koshi if you watch Channel 7 and he has a segment called Koshi's Business Builders and she found me on Google she was in Sydney she said hey Sandra we're in lockdown we're trying to do more stories over in WA um, I'm looking and she saw that I was a PR company I'm looking for a client that is you know in Perth blah, blah, blah. Do you have any clients that would be happy to be on the show? And I said, absolutely, Cindy. I have clients that I could, you know, get get you um, to speak to for the show. Anyways, I got the client to go on the show. Next minute, I said to her, Cindy, if you ever need a marketing person to talk about marketing or LinkedIn in particular, because that's really where I sit, um, LinkedIn and, and helping clients with their LinkedIn, I said, feel free to call me, you know, message me, email me. I'm more than happy to, you know, help out and, and, and do a segment on LinkedIn. Fast forward about two weeks after that, and she um, she called me and she said, hey, Sandra, we're actually uh, looking for to do another segment and you came to mind and I would love for you to um, talk about LinkedIn and the power of social media. And um, do you have any clients you can interview and give them advice on social media and LinkedIn? I said, of course I do. And long story short, I did the interview and I, uh, sorry, Channel 7, they came, they did the pre production and it was on Koshi's Business Builders Channel 7, just like that. So from what happened, and I could have just left it, I could have just been like, oh, she wants to speak to a client, but I took the initiative to say, Cindy, if you do need somebody, I would love to be considered to come and just, you've got to put yourself out there as well. You know, it's all great me putting a vision board and being like, please universe, send me a zillion dollars and make me, you know, whatever. That's all great, but you still have to take initiative. You still have to work at it. So by me simply, you know, reaching out to her and saying hey if you ever need anyone to talk about this reach out to me two weeks later she did you know it's that that's about building your personal brand so that's just a little example of something I did that you know eventuated into being on channel seven Koshi's business builders talking about LinkedIn so it adds a lot of credibility and authority to what I do by being able to have that um, and you know about a week ago I saw someone with client slash business strategic client and he said oh I saw you know you were on Koshi's business builders and that so people talk about it people see it so don't ever underestimate the power of just getting out there putting yourself out there as well but the the, the goal is going this is what I want to be known for right this is my niche this is my skill set this is what I love this is the the stuff I want to talk about therefore you know that's how I'm going to portray myself to the world. So yeah, um, and another one is YouTube. So YouTube is really good. Um, obviously, you know, it can be time consuming having your own YouTube channel. But if you do have the time, absolutely start your own YouTube channel. YouTube is still one of the most searched, you know, or, or viewed platforms in the world. So, you know, if you talk about whatever your subject matter is, create a YouTube channel about it people will find you like that, right? So when you've got your personal brand, so you've got your idea of what your brand is, you then build your personal brand, then you execute your personal brand. By executing your personal brand, you've got inbound marketing, outbound marketing. So inbound marketing means people are coming to you, they're getting referred to you, they're finding you online. And outbound marketing is you putting yourself out there, you're doing video content, you're doing YouTube videos. So a perfect marketing strategy is a bit of both. You have to put yourself out there and you need to wait and you will also have clients come to you. So it's 50-50. So, yeah, I think what happens is a lot of times people are not sure what to do, so they just kind of 
stick around and like, oh, I'm not getting any leads. I'm not getting any clients. Why isn't my business growing? And my question always is, what are you doing? What activities are you doing on a daily basis that are going to get you to where you want to be? Right? It's kind of like going, you know, I always use the analogy of exercising. What are you doing on a daily basis to get your health to where it needs to be? What are you doing on a daily basis to get your business to where you want it to be? And if you're just sitting waiting for people to pick up and call you, unfortunately, it's not always going to work like that. It can for a bit, but you still need to be doing that outbound, which is that personal brand, which is putting yourself out there. Okay, so outbound marketing, inbound marketing. Don't underestimate the power of both. Inbound marketing is where SEO comes in hand really well. So, for example, if you type in, you know, LinkedIn or public relations, Perth, you know, if you come up on top for those keywords, chances are that you will be that leader in that industry because you were quite easily found on Google for that. So I won't go into that too much because I know we are going to run in time. How to become a thought leader. So once again, thought leadership, be authentic, write thought leadership pieces, right? You can contribute to publications for free. You can contribute to your LinkedIn articles on Facebook, do blogs, write about your subject matter, share advice on your expertise. 80% of the content that you put out into the world based on your brand needs to be of educational, inspirational, conversational, and 20% is promotional, right? So educate people about your industry, your personal brand, what it is that you want to be known for, share inspirational you know, content, and share conversational content. So going back to the LinkedIn post that I was going to do is, um, which I will hopefully today if I get a moment, um, you know, what, what has, you know, it was saying something about this is what happened to me best thing that ever happened what has happened in your life that seemed like the worst thing at the time but now it actually is the best thing that you look back in hindsight so I've created conversation in that post um, that you know hopefully people will respond to and say this is what happened to me and by creating conversation you're building that brand um, write blogs, write articles on LinkedIn now. I won't get time today to go into it, but on LinkedIn, you can actually start your own newsletter. So you might say, you know, social media advice weekly with Sandra Tricoli or LinkedIn advice with Sandra Tricoli or, you know, mining advice or, you know, I, whatever it is that you do, you can start a newsletter and send it to all your database on LinkedIn to read monthly, weekly, daily, as many or as little times as you want. Um, be a leader in your field, not a follower. That's really important. Lead, don't follow. Sometimes people just jump on the bandwagon of what's trending at the moment. Don't be that. Be the leader. Be creative. Think outside the box. Start conversations. Sometimes they might be uncomfortable. They might not be because not everyone's doing it. But be the leader. Talk about things that are yet to be trending. Sometimes you might have to look, you know, I know in WA sometimes there's a bit of a lag with what's, you know, trending and not have a look at the world what's happening in the UK what's happening in New York what's trending what's not maybe you can become a thought leader around those subject matters as well and last of all do videos talking about your expertise once again I know videos can feel uncomfortable sometimes and it's awkward but if you identify what are the subject matters that I want to cover what are the things I want to be known for what are the things that you know I specialize in do videos talking about that kind of content, that will definitely assist you in creating uh, that personal brand in that space. What happens when you don't have a strong personal brand? You lose credibility. You don't get as many opportunities. You won't be as heard as other people in your industry and you're not, cannot, you will not be able to make as much of an impact as you would otherwise. So think about that, right? You don't want to lose credibility. You want to get those opportunities. You want to get those doors opening and you want to be able to make an impact in the world. All these things are going to contribute um, to, you know, you having a strong personal brand is going to hopefully um, you know, give you credibility, open up doors, make help you make more of an impact in the world and really become that go-to person in your industry. So that brings us to 10.30. God, that went quickly. I feel like I could talk for another like 10 days um, about this because there is so much content, but that is really the core of a personal brand. So just to really recap, identify who you are, what your skills are, what are your values, what do you want to be known for? Write down all of that, then ask somebody you know, two or three people that you know, hey, what would you say is my personal brand? What are the top things that come to mind when, you know, you talk with me and all the rest? 
then I want you to create a bit of even like a vision board or something where you can, you know, really see this is what I want to be, you know, and, and don't ever underestimate the power of goal setting in that. I think it's so important. You know, every year I write down all my goals and I always review them and what are my goals and why is it important to achieve these goals and all that kind of stuff. And um yeah, and and look at your social media platforms and see how you're showing up on those platforms. And if you don't feel like it's aligned with your brand, your personal brand, clean it up. You know, we want to make sure that your personal brand is is clean and um, consistent across all channels, not just how you show up every day, but also how you show up online and offline um, is, is really important. So, look, hopefully that's given you a little bit of food for thought. Um, I know we've only had an hour, which is for me not enough because I feel like I need five hours to talk about this, but hopefully it's given you a little bit of a snippet in terms of what personal branding is. But the most important thing I want you to know is that personal branding is not what other people say about you. It's what you create for yourself that others will say about you. So it's what you want and it's then being consistent with that, um, you know, with how you show up in the world. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Andrew, Kevin, Sanya, BT and Charity, um, thank you for joining me today. And like I mentioned earlier on, if you do need more assistance or more of that one-on-one -on -one assistance, you can book in to see me through the ASBAS program. Um, and I will also um, send you guys these slides later today. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Thanks, Sandra. That was good. Thanks, Sanya. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. It was great. Look forward to talking with you more. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks.